Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, I want to say good afternoon to those of you who are joining us here on the East Coast. It is just after 12 noon Eastern time. Of course, I want to say good morning to those of you in the central time zones, the mountain time zones, or the Pacific time zones. Of course, good evening if anyone joining us from across the pond in parts of UK or parts of Europe. And of course, good early morning if anyone's joining us from parts of Asia or Australia. Welcome to today's presentation dubbed How to Win in Any Market. But what we're really going to do is take a look at the frequently asked questions regarding the radioactive trading techniques, questions that you probably have about the strategy, uh, what we're doing as far as the limited risk technique, how it can benefit you, and of course we're also going to look at why am I doing this structure? Why am I not doing something else that can be more profitable? Real quick, Harry just sent in a question. He says, I have to go meet someone for lunch. Please tell me, uh, will this be recorded? Absolutely, Harry. I'm recording it right now. The webinar will be posted in the archive and on YouTube probably at around 4 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll send an email to all of you when that is available. And of course, for those of you who don't know me, I'm sorry, my name is Mike Chupka. I'm the Director of Education here at Radioactive Trading and at Power Options as well. And I also trade this technique, the radioactive techniques, and have traded this technique in my personal account, about 40 to 50 percent of my personal trading account, for the past 10 years. Okay, and you'll see why I'm still using this technique with 40 to 50 percent of my trading account as we go through the presentation and the comparisons. In this presentation, I want to do something different. Rather than what you've seen me do before about share a single concept of the radioactive trading techniques, a flashy graph of an income method that we use, one of the 12 that we use in radioactive trading against the limited risk position, or rehash the benefits of a portfolio to limiting risk first, we're just going to go right into the questions, some that I received from the webinars we've done in the past uh, week and a half or two weeks here, or really that I answer on almost a daily basis after a presentation or when someone gets introduced to the sketch, the free white paper of radioactive trading, or one of the webinars. So very first, the basic, what is radioactive trading? Well, it's a properly structured, limited risk trading strategy that forces you to avoid the trap of overtrading. Every new position we open controls risk to single digits. We avoid the lie of leverage, which we'll talk about in many different sections of this presentation. Now, once I initiate that properly structured limited risk trade, it only carries single digit risks, we can then use 12 different income methods to lower the risk, generate income, and potentially bulletproof the trade. There's 12 different income methods for different market conditions, or what we call the SEGA model, and I'll describe that in just a little bit too. Okay? All right, now the full technique is described in the blueprint, and we'll get to that later as well. All right, so question number two. Also simple, now that we know what the structure is, what is radioactive trading, what types of stocks do you use? Well, in general, I'm going to use any type of stock that I'm bullish on. The long answer is, is that the criteria that are shown on power options in our married put search or the RPM report tool that's available for Fusion subscribers at RadioactiveTrading.com, the results that I see use the stock and option criteria that Ernie, the president and founder of Power Options, myself or other radioactive traders would use to open a position today. That criteria is discussed in the blueprint. Now. This is based on the performance, testing, trial and error that Kurt Frankenberg, the founder of Radioactive Trading, has used since 2001, making adjustments to the criteria, what types of stocks uh, that he looks for, and Ernie's and my personal experience and personal trading results since the end of 2007, beginning of 2008 as well. Okay, all right. Okay, I got a couple questions that are coming in. I'll get to those in just a moment. Now, the types of stocks that we look for, some common, some not common, some you may have heard of, some you may not have heard of, 
but this is the exact trading results that I would have found yesterday on December 27th had I looked at the RPM report on Fusion and decided to place a trade. Now, these are currently sorted by earnings per share growth. There is a reason for that as well. We feel the earnings drive the stocks more. But we see stocks that we're aware of. Cabot Oil and Gas, uh, TAL Education, Paycom Software, PayPal Holdings, Grubhub, and some other ones you might not be aware of. IIVI Inc., Site One Landscape Supply. Okay? Of these positions here, I think Ernie's actually in PayPal and in FCX, Report McMurrin. So these are trades, these are the ones that we would pick. Okay? We're looking for bullish stocks, of course, stocks that we feel are bullish in nature and that are going to move up. It is a bullish strategy. But again, we use 12 different income methods because we're not always right with our anticipation or the market throws us a curveball. Okay? So let's just take the top one. What would a radioactive trade from the beginning look like if I had opened one yesterday? Might have gone at the top of the list. Cabot Oil and Gas, 2813. And I probably would have bought the listed trade, the January 2019 30 put for 410. And my total investment would be 32.23. We're guaranteed to get 30 back, so it's only 6.9% risk on the position. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. All right. Now, here's the Mary put. Here's the radioactive trade structure that I would use. And here's what the profit and loss chart looks like. Now, I'm paying 410. You know, almost, you could say 20%, 15% of the underlying stock price. So I'm adding a cost basis of 15% to take my total cost to 32.23. But I'm doing this to guarantee an exit. Better than a stop order. Can't be violated like a stop order. And the insurance is out about 385 days. In the absolute worst case scenario, the most I could lose in this position is about 7%. And... I have unlimited upside profit potential at the start. Now, the worst case scenario is illustrated by the blue hockey stick graph, of course. So, meaning that if I did absolutely nothing on this position, and I held it all the way to January 2019, 18th of January 2019, and did nothing, made no adjustments, accepted no dividends, I would need the stock to be trading at 32.23 in order to break even. But notice the curve red line. This is at the halfway point on July 10th, seven months from now. And even if the stock's just trading at 30, still $2 below the break even, I'd be at a break even. Okay? We're going to explain why real quick because that comes into some of our other questions going on. But this is the initial structure I will start with to control risk, properly structured. Because I'm buying the stock in the put, it forces me to not overtrade. Okay, so that's the initial structure. What we talked about with question number one, how do we solve what is radioactive trading? Well, it's a properly structured, limited risk strategy that leaves the upside open and prevents me from overtrading. Okay, so the next question is, okay, Mike, I get it. It's a bullish strategy, you showed that. You talked about what stocks you're gonna use. What put do you select? Well, this is based on the three core principles of radioactive trading and really any trading strategy. Number one, we want to force an ideal size trade. I know many of you are doing spreads. Some of you are doing covered calls. I'm not going to take the polled asset, but I know that we're active traders here. Some of you are probably buying calls. But one of the first keys to success is not only proper structure, but proper position sizing. I don't want to have an account of $40,000 or $50,000 and buy $50,000 worth of a single call strike buying 50, 60, 100, 200 contracts of a call on, say, Apple or Amazon because I'm really bullish. That's not forcing an ideal size trade. I don't want to take a margin requirement of $20,000, $25,000 on a bull put credit spread hoping the stock will stay the same and move up. I only want to use a small portion of my account for that to make sure I'm not risking more than 1% or 2%. So any trading, this is important. But we are forcing ourselves into an ideal size trade 
by the control of the structure, which doesn't exist in a lot of other strategies. The other one is the ATM bell curve. I know the picture is not that big, but what it's essentially showing is this is the time value curve. And time value is always highest on an option chain, on an underlying stock, but the time value of the at the money option, the one closest to the stock price in any expiration month, is always the highest. And you have lower time values, you go in the money and out of the money. Now the in the money is going to be more expensive because you have intrinsic value and time value, or what's called extrinsic value. But buying an out of the money put or buying an out of the money call is risky because unless the stock moves, you lose 100% of that time value very quickly. With an in the money option, whether you're buying it for insurance or speculation, yes, you pay a higher price and the time might still decay. The extrinsic value might still decay but you're withholding most of that intrinsic value that you pay to without getting 100% loss over trading. Okay? So the ATM bell curve teaches when we're buying, we want to buy in or out of the money. When we're selling, we want to be selling close to at the money for the most time value. And speaking of time value, the third principle is the radioactive decay line. Now this shows us 30 days here at the end of the curve to zero. And this is when the time decay of an option is the most rapid. And all of you know that. If you're selling spreads, covered calls, cash secured naked puts, you're probably selling weeklies or maybe 14 day out spreads, seven day out spreads, 14 day out spreads or so forth, maybe even 20 to 28 day spreads because you want the time decay to be rapid and you want less time for the stock to move against you. But when I'm buying for speculation or I'm buying for insurance, I want to be going 150 days out in time because even if the stock doesn't move as I expect, that time value decay is very slow. and It really doesn't kick in until that last 45 to 30 days. So I'm putting time on my side, buying the right option for the ATM bell curve to not pay into higher time value and the proper structure. So what put am I going to select? Well, it's the put that gives me a combination with the stock that meets those three requirements. I want to keep the risk to range about 3 to 9% of the total investment. Okay? But I want to go in the money for the best protection, but not too deep in the money. There is such a thing as too little risk. We showed the Cabot position at 28.13 and buying the one year out 30 strike put for risk of only about 7%. I could have bought the January 2019 40 put or 45 strike put and probably only had a risk of 20 or 30 cents or about 0.3, 0.4% on the position. But that's too deep in the money. My expectancy of any further profit is much lower because the expectation of the stock reaching that point to where we have a profit on the position is very low. So we don't want to go too deep in the money and based on the radioactive decay line, I want to put an insurance policy in my favor that's 150 days out of time or more so the time decay is less slow and I have much more time for the stock to move in my direction or to make adjustments if it's not with that limited risk proper structure in place. Naturally this is going to lead us to something else. We already talked about was paying 410 for a put option that's one year out on a stock trading at 28 increasing the cost basis on my position by about 15 to 20%. So right away, I must be losing money as I enter the trade. Now, it's not a question, but it's an observation that comes up. Now, this is what we call the five-line setup. It's discussed in the blueprint for the position, how we like to look at the opening structure. And again, yesterday, I might have bought shares of COG, Capital and Gas, at 28.13, and bought that one year out, January 30 put, for 4.10. A total investment is 32.23, guaranteed, not like a stop order, but guaranteed to get out at 30, so the maximum risk, again, is only $2.23 monetarily, or 6% of what I invested in the position. Ten minutes before the start of the webinar, here's a screenshot of the portfolio on power options. I entered the position at 28.13. You see that here? 
and the stock's up about 20 cents or so to 28.33. Now, 4.10 was the ask price of the put option around yesterday's close, around 3.50, 3.55 p.m. Now, interestingly, it's actually moved up, and this is because we're looking at the midpoint price. The bid price, if I sold it, would probably be about 3.95. Okay, so the put did lose money. The stock moved up, and the put lost about 15 cents. So after opening the position yesterday, am I down $4.10? No, the put didn't go to zero. Am I down $2.23, which was the maximum risk because the stock hasn't moved up to 30 or 32.23? No, I'm actually looking at a profit on the position, okay? Even though the stock is nowhere near the 32.23, that break even, that cost basis is only relevant if I held the position all the way to expiration and made no adjustments, okay? The put doesn't go to zero. In fact, it is a working asset that we can manipulate based on the ATM bell curve and the red line decay to adjust that put, even if the stock hasn't moved up necessarily, to lower the initial risk, maybe even generate some income to the position as well. Those are some of the 12 income methods. But why pay so much for the far out in the money put? Again, it's to follow the three core principles. A shorter term put for insurance is going to be cheaper. What do we all know about insurance? You get what you pay for. Yesterday, the 2018 January 30 put, which is only 23 days to expiration, was priced at 210. So it's about $1.85 in the money, right? If we got in at 28.13 or 28.15. So the 30 strike put, about $1.85 of intrinsic, so we're looking about 25, 35 cents here of time value, very low risk. But the January 30 put that we looked at, which was 387 days out, is at 410. I have 16 times the amount of time, but only less than two times the cost. When I buy the put option further out in time, why am I paying so much for it? Again, as we showed, the option that's six months out in time or six times the amount of time is not going to be six times the cost of the near-term option at the same strike. I'm getting a lower cost per day for the insurance. And as you know, those of you who are generating premium again with the spread trades, with the covered calls, you know you want to sell month by month or week by week to get a better annualized return. I want to have a lower annualized cost on my insurance, and that's why I'm buying further out in time. Also, think about it this way. What if the stock goes to $30 in 30 days? All right, well, my 2018 January 30 put would lose all $2.10 of its value. All right, stock's at $30. It's right at your put strike price. January expiration, 23 days away, goes to zero. Now, you gained $1.87 in the stock from 2813, but you lose all two tenths. So you're at a loss of 23 cents. Now, to stay in the position, are you going to buy another 30 put to February for a dollar or dollar ten? Well, see, now you're at a cost basis of 320 on your insurance. And if you do it again in March, same thing happens. You pay another dollar. Now you're at the same cost basis I am, and I still have. 10 months of insurance, nine months of insurance still in place. Now, because of the ATM bell curve, remember, I bought an in-the-money put. And as the stock moves, my put's going to lose value. But an interesting thing occurs. It's now gone from in the money at 30 to at the money. So yes, I'm going to lose intrinsic value, but the extrinsic value, that time value, is going to swell. Based on the Black-Scholes pricing model, if the stock was trading at 30 on January 18th, 2018, my one year out 30 put is going to be priced around 310. It still has 12 months of time value and it's right at the money. So did I lose a dollar on the put? Yes. But I gained 187 on the stock. So this position would have a gain of 87 cents where the cheaper, shorter term put would have a loss on the position. That's the advantage of putting time on your side. 
And this is from the custom spread tool on power options. We put in for COG, you can see it's the exact position here, 100 shares of COG at 28.13, the 2019.30 put at 4.10. And if the stock was trading at 30 on January 19th, 2018, expected value of 3.12. So yeah, lost about a dollar, gained about a dollar 87. So total profit here, $89, $85 as opposed to a loss with a shorter term option. Now you could say, well, why didn't you just buy the out of the money January put for cheap on COG? Again, you get what you pay for. That might have cost 80 cents to buy, let's say the, uh, it was about a dollar for the 27 and a half, but about 75 to 80 cents for the 25. Okay, so the stock goes up to 30. That put expires worthless, we lose the 80 cents, let's say we paid on the position, gain $1.87 on the stock, so I've gained $1 in 30 days. About the same that I have with the in the money put that's far out in time, even though I paid 410, five times the cost of the cheap out of the money one month put, we're about at the same. And I still have, again, 12 months of insurance in place that I've already paid for, all right? Okay, so now we know the structure. Now we know the basics, what put to select. I'm not going to go into the details. That's what the blueprint's for. But, of course, what is the point of trading this? What are your returns? Now, on average, Ernie and I see about 10 to 12% returns per year, and that's from 2007 to current. Being long stock, protected, through 2008, that's still our average return. I know a lot of covered call investors have had great success in the last 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. Some of you have it. In our webinar last week, we had, uh, I think it was 35%, 40% of our audience trading covered calls, and we had 15 to 16% of our total audience who lost money last year, and another 25% who were just about at break even. Okay, so that structure is not working even in the bull market. Okay, so for 2017, my return is around 18%. It has the potential to go up to 21% depending on what happens in the next two weeks. I counted to January because I opened the position in 2017. Yeah, it, it could actually increase that much. So it's above or right about the return on the S&P 500. Now, I'll get to this later, but one of the reasons why it wasn't as high as it should be, it should be probably about 28% to tell you the truth, was a position I had on AEIS early on, and the stock gained 23% when I was in the position. I didn't make nearly the return because I sold a call against it too soon. Right after I sold the call, the stock moved up five points in $2 increments over the three-day period. So before I could catch it, it was just gone. Problem covered call traders have as well, but that's okay. I am meeting my goals for this strategy, and it represents 50% of my trading account. Is it possible to have outsized gains? Yes. I had a 58.9% gain on Silver Wheaton a few years back. Okay, I got into the stock at 17, and I closed the position out uh, for a 58.9% gain over a five-month period. I've also had a low 4.1% gain on a stock that dropped 65% in five months. And I was long stock the entire time using the income methods to adjust the position. I have also been in a position that dropped 50 cent, 50% and I only lost 6%. I didn't even manage it, just said it failed completely. I'm out of the position. Had I been doing covered calls and trying to roll it down, it still would have been a 35% loss. And I know you probably would have closed it out there, but how many times have you accidentally got caught thinking a stock would recover only to watch it drop further and further and you're trying to get 50 cents to a dollar rolling down the call on your covered call position and the stock's falling three points, four points, one point, two points every week or almost every day. And your rolling down isn't getting you ahead and if it snaps back up, you can get assigned and lock in a loss. Okay? All right. So am I lighting the world on fire? No. This isn't the only strategy I trade, but again, I'm meeting my goals, exceeding my goals in most cases, and long-term. 
seeing success. So this would lead to another question, well, okay, Mike, yeah, you're not lighting the world on fire. Can I do better with covered calls or spread positions? I was on a phone call with a gentleman yesterday who was interested in the radioactive trading techniques, and he did pick up the blueprint at the end of your special, and he said, you know, I was doing covered calls for only the last eight months, and I had success, but I had three trades that just surprised me, moved down too quickly, and I'm treading water. Okay, and he said, you know what, I've been taught, I don't want to hit home runs, I don't want to gamble on long calls, I, you know, I don't want to look for 100% returns or 200% returns on a position in, in a one month or three week period that I see advertised. He said, I just kind of want to hit singles. And I said, well, that's great, and covered calls allow you to do that. But with the baseball analogy, if you're hitting singles and singles and singles and singles, if your pitcher gives up a home run and a triple and another home run, that one inning alone probably just wiped you out of the game. Okay? So in the right market, absolutely. I'll agree with you. Spread trades, covered calls, ratio spreads, things of that nature could outperform. But for how long? On power options, I put in extensive testing into creating a default search for weekly bull put spreads that showed consistent performance, especially in the last two years. Now, the last 12 months, it had a return of about 40%. The two-year return, taking the top three results of the weekly bull puts and trading it, was about 85%. But over 10 years, that only averages about a 12% return per year. Kind of right where I'm at with radioactive trading, with 110 trades per year, opening two to three trades almost every other week for 52 weeks, about 110 trades for the year. That 40% return and 85% return is not including commissions. That 12% over 10 years, 1,200 and some odd trades, is not including commissions. So when you think about that, these positions are going to do better, but how often do you want to trade? How often do you want to be looking at your positions? Or how often are you scared or stressed by a black swan event, a strange geopolitical event that causes the markets a little panic and a little bit volatility, even with your stops in place on the spread, even with contingent orders in place? Okay, So long term, everything kind of evens out. But I'd rather spend less of my time trading, knowing I have insurance in place, rather than panicking on a five-day trade or only getting 10 or 15 cents on a five or 10-day trade and having to trade multiple contracts to get a reasonable credit. Now, just think about this. How many of you are interested in radioactive trading because you were promised that you'd make 3 to 6% return per month on covered calls, but you've never seen that, even in the last 12 months, even in the last two years? especially over the last 10 years. You're not seeing the compounding that they were talking about. And again, spread trades. Many of you have had success in the last 12 months with spread trades. I know you have. Some of you might have not been as successful. Why? Well, it's because of the lie of leverage. What we're looking at here is a screenshot of what we call the trade simulator tool. It's at radioactivetrading.com under the resources tab. What this simple tool allows me to do is plug in my expected target return for a strategy, how much I'm willing to lose on the position, the probability of success or probability of loss. And we'll take a starting cash amount and we can set our invested per trade of that cash amount. And what we're going to do is flip a coin 100 times. Heads we win. Tails, we lose, and our ratio of success is based on the probability. So here's a standard spread structure. If I take in 50 cents net credit on a five-point spread, whether it's two weeks out, whether it's one month out, but just think about a five-point spread, take in 50 cents. So you're making the potential to make 50 cents on a true risk of 450 margin requirement for the difference in strike prices. So that would be an 11.1% return. Now I'm going to put a stop at 50%. Okay, 
Okay, and that means 225. Maximum loss on that five point spread would be 450. So if I stop it at 50, I'd only take a loss of 225. We're not even going to see a 100% loss if the stock drops below both strike prices, are we? No, we're going to stop that beforehand, okay? So, and we're going to have an 80% probability of success. I set that probability of loss to 20%, so we're going to have an 80% success rate. What does that mean? If I'm opening a credit spread, let's say a bull put, I want to be out of the money, I want to get a reasonable double-digit return, and I want to probably see a 75-80% probability above. Long term, did this work out? Here we have a win ratio of 82%. At 100 trades, 82 wins, 18 losses. Never lost 100. Some we might have maybe lost less on if we were managing them. But some were going to get away from us. So we're going to take the average of 225 on a 450 spread or 50%. At one point, we almost doubled our money. And at one point, we were down 80%. And that's being right 82% of the time. And at the end, we've got a 53% loss on our portfolio. For those of you who are trading spreads, finding positions that have an 80, 85% probability above with a reasonable double digit return, and you're not seeing success, this is why. With an 80% probability and a ratio, you know, 5 to 450, a 9 to 1 risk reward ratio, you have to be right 87 to 90% of the time in order to profit long term. Over one year, over 10 years, over five years. If you're looking for deep out of the money, 90% probability of success with only a 5% return you're actually going to need to be right 93 or 94% of the time to profit long term. If you're only right 88% of the time or 87% of the time, you'll lose money on your positions. Now, one of our attendees asked this question uh, is Mark. Okay, let's see here. Uh, okay, so think about this for a minute. If you're making 11% or which is 100% of what you expected to get on the credit spread and you're keeping your losses structured to where you don't lose more than 50% on the ones that really go against you and you're right 80% of the time it's not successful you need to be right closer to 85% of the time the question that came in from email and again he sent it to me here in the question pod is sometimes I have a trade that is going well in options say a 40% gain meaning he'll keep 40% of the credit. So in our example, if I got a 50 cent net credit up front, the stock's doing what I want, I'm a week or so, two weeks before expiration, and I can liquidate the spread and get 25 cents or 20 cents, make 40% of what I expected. Okay, But then it might go to 80% gain with only a couple of weeks left to go. And he says, what are the techniques to keep the gain and go for the rest? Okay, well, Sometimes in spreads, you might follow the 80-20 rule. Same with a naked put position. If you got 80% of what you expected to make on the position, go ahead and maybe close the position early. Would you open a new position on the same stock? Only if you had the same expectation. If you think it's run its course, you might do something else. Look for another position. Change strategy if your sentiment has gone from bullish to bearish. Okay, that's the conversation, a little bit more of a conversation for a different time on our credit spread presentations. But think about what the trade simulator just showed. If you're closing your positions early for 80% gains, so that would be an 8.7% return instead of 11.1 or somewhere around there, but still had losses of 40 to 50% of the maximum loss 80, 85% of the time, will that work out? No. If you close your positions early, and yes, I know you're trying to manage the losers and not let those become losses, but if you close those positions early, how will that work out? Run the trade simulator. Go to RadioactiveTrading.com. Click on the Resources tab. Think about what your maximum leverage return usually is on your bull put spreads. Take 80% of that and put that into the target return. 
set your losses to what you think is realistic. Of the losses you've taken of the year, does that represent 40%, 50%? Sometimes you might have lost 100%. What does that represent of your trading record? And what was your win-loss ratio? And do you think your win-loss ratio would improve from, let's say, 80% to 87% by closing the positions early but only taking 8.7 instead of 11.1 or whatever that works out to be? Run that simulation. See if it works out. I honestly don't think it will. So again, is, is there what is the answer? To do something else? No. The answer might be to continue to do this, but with the realization you're going to need to be right 85 to 90 percent of the time to be successful long term. As I said, I can show you spread criteria that had a 40 percent return in the last 12 months and 85 over two years. I can't guarantee that's going to happen going forward depends on the market. If the market shifts, you could lose 20% or 30% in the first month. That's the lie of leverage. But even covered calls and naked puts have the same problem. Here's a structure considering covered calls and naked puts. I buy a stock, I sell a call, my max return, my percent if assigned might be a target of around 3%, and that's being generous with the current level of the VIX and volatility in the market. But at the same time, you might follow the old rules of IBD and William O'Neill, and you're going to stop any position if the stock falls or your position falls by 7%. And you're going to shoot for a target that you're going to need to be right, or you're going to want to be right 70% of the time. We start out with $10,000, we invest 50% into maybe two positions during a given month, or maybe weeklies during a given week. So $5,000 into two covered calls in this case. And you can change all of that on your own. Check out the trade simulator tool at RadioactiveTrading.com. But look at the results. Winning track record. You're right 70% of the time. And at one point in 100 trades, you had about a 10% gain on your portfolio. 13, really. But long term, even being right 70% of the time, you're just treading water. And we're not using commissions. Okay, and in either example, we are not using commissions. Okay, so this is why you're likely not getting the returns that you were promised with covered calls. Because even with making 3, 4% at a time, even if you keep your losses to 7 or 8%, being right 70% of the time is not going to cut it. You're not doing bad. You didn't see a drawdown of more than 14%, but you're not doing good. You're not getting what you were promised, and that comes into the loss factor. Not necessarily the lie of leverage, but the structure of the trade still works against you. All right, so long-term success. Same simulation, but my win-loss ratio. Okay. Over the past 10 years that we've been posting my radioactive trades infusion, my average win is 6.5%. My average loss is 5.3%. And I'm right only about 60% of the time, 59% of the time. So after 100 trades, 59 wins and 41 losses, 50-50 track record, a little bit better, 60-40 track record, Again, allocating $10,000 might be a 50% return. Because of the proper structure and even though I'm not making as much as credit spreads for the leverage return position on average, by leaving the upside open to begin with, getting a little bit more than the covered call trader without having to buy back the call, waiting to sell the call at a better time. Okay, so this comes down to what is possible. What is your return? Okay, well, this is what we see. And this is why I still trade this structure and this strategy with 40 to 50% of my trading capital allocated to options and haven't gone into covered calls again in the last two years or cash secured naked puts. With the proper structure, you can be wrong more often than right and still make money. But I don't have to stress about being right 80, 85. 90, or with covered calls, 70, 73% of the time, okay? I want to be right more often than wrong. Don't get me wrong. 
But this structure, even if I had a 50-50 win-loss ratio, the biggest drawdown would probably be 5 or 6%, and it would still have the potential for gains, which you couldn't see with covered calls. You'd go bankrupt in credit spreads, and even with leveraged long call positions at a 50-50 win-loss ratio. Speaking of long calls, we saw the married put structure, the profit and loss chart on CIG, COG. Another frequently asked questions, isn't this the same as a long call? And couldn't I do better instead of putting out the $3,200 on COG to buy 100 shares in one put, why not just put up the $250, $260 to buy the long call? The married put, the radioactive setup is not a parity to a long call. They're not parity trades. The profit and loss chart is similar, not arguing that. In fact, it's pretty much the same depending on how deep you want to get into semantics. But remember the lie of leverage. The long call risks 100% of whatever you invested into the position, and this is where investors get into trouble. Even with calendar spreads, diagonal spreads, using an in-the-money, far-out-in-time call and trying to sell calls against it. Some people are trying to advertise it now as the poor man's covered call. I still trade that with my account as well. But the lie of leverage comes into play. Same look on capital and gas from yesterday, from 1227. Rather than enter the married put, buying the stock, buying the one year out 30 strike put for 410. What if I bought that 2019 January 30 call, which was priced at 270? Well, now I've invested 270 for one contract instead of $3,223. But I'm risking 100% of what I invested into the trade. Not 6.9% not single digits. I'm risking 100% of what I put into the trade. So yeah, the similar risk reward and outcomes. Let me show you that again, of course. Both have infinite upside. Both have a controlled risk if you're disciplined, but one's risking 100% in the investment, one's risking 6.9%. Remember, the married put only had a risk of 223. That long call is out at 270. 6.9 versus 100%. Well, how much do you have to gain on your next trade after a 100% loss? Well, as we talked about, if you put everything into it, the improper structure, 100% loss means you've got nothing left. I know you wouldn't do that, okay? But if I even just used 5% of my portfolio to buy calls on COG and suffered the 100% loss, I'm going to need a 200% gain on the next position, putting in the same amount of capital in order to get back to break even. That's the slippery slope of the live leverage. They're not parity trades, even though they have the exact same risk reward profile, profit and loss chart when you look at it. But they're not parity because of the risk. If you only bought one call on COG and you left hold on your account, the $28.13 per share you would have used to buy 100 shares of stock, now we are at parity. Okay? Because even if you lost 100% on that 270 you paid for, you kept 2800 aside, so you only lost 7.2, 7.3% of your investment. And it's actually a little bit higher than that because of the, the moneyness involved. It was 270 where the risk on the married put was only 223, so you're looking at closer to a 9% risk. But, that's the only true parity. If you bought one call and left the money on hold in your account and didn't trade it with anything else, that's the parity to a married put. Just buying the call by itself is not. And let's be honest, are you only going to buy one call? No. You're using leverage for a reason. You'd buy maybe five contracts of COG, put about $1,000 or close to $1,500 into the trade. Well, now you're risking $1,500 of your portfolio. I'm still risking $223. Okay, and you're not going to put that 2813 aside. What you're going to do is take the remaining capital you have in your account and buy three contracts of a call on XYZ, maybe four contracts of a put on stock one, two, three. Okay, now it starts to get out of hand. 
Now you've got too much exposed in your portfolio, and it's not the proper structure. Another comparison that always comes up is why buy the stock? Okay, I get the idea that the long call is risking 100% of the position. So instead of buying the stock and putting up $3,200, why don't I just buy an in-the-money call and the same put that you would have bought to ensure the position? I have a much lower cost with the same protection. Well, is it? Now you've created an in-the-money long strangle. And as you can see over here, sure, the investment's only $950. Because both options are in the money, the maximum loss, if the stock's between the strike prices, and again, this all assumes you do nothing, hold the position all the way to expiration, but the maximum loss would be $450, or 47.4%. That's not putting the risk in our favor. That's not a proper structure. Another issue with this is that this position is not delta neutral, it is delta opposed. Anytime I've run an example for customers on comparing this in the money long strangle to use leverage versus the married put, if the stock moves up one or two percent, I'm going to see a gain on the married put position. Okay, it might only be 0.5 or 1%, but I'm going to see a gain because I have a positive delta in the direction I thought the stock was going to go. With the in-the-money long strangle, if the stock moves up 1% or 2%, okay, maybe even a little bit more, but around up to about 5%, there's no gain. The delta of the long call has not gained enough to counter the loss of delta on the long put, your delta opposed until you get to about 6 or 7% increase. At that point, I'm already looking at a 3 or 4% return on the married put without any adjustments. Of course, if the stock falls, you can have profit to the downside. But again, sure, the unexpected can happen, but long term, again, talking about long term, this kind of structure, you need much more movement one way or the other to start realizing a profit and if the stock stagnates, this gets crushed much worse than a radioactive trade. Okay, so I don't think it's a viable solution. I've tested it. I've traded it myself when I first started with radioactive trading, and I was having more success with just the married puts than substituting a long call or substituting a long call in place of the stock and creating the in-the-money long strangle. All right, but let's think about COG again. Remember earlier, we saw that the married put has a strange thing going on. This is right before we started the webinar. But on our married put position, the stock's up 20 cents, and the bid-ask spread increased, so the midpoint of the put has also increased by about 20 cents. But in general, we saw that with the stock up 20 cents, we might have only lost 10 cents or so on the put. Now, look at the in-the-money-long strangle. The stock moved up 20 cents. It's weird. Again, we count the put in there. That in the money long strangle, it moved up 20, but the call is almost exactly where it was. It's not gaining anything. I'm gaining more, and yes, we're considering midpoints here, but I'm gaining more on the married put right now in real time from a trade that could have been open yesterday as opposed to the in the money long strangle. Now, that's using the in the money 25 call. The Parity trade, the at the money 30 call, stock up 20 cents. This is actually down 8 cents because of the bid ask spread and the cost at 270 yesterday. So, which one's winning? Is it really a parity trade? Not necessarily. We have other examples I can show you much later on. But, and this is all in the noise. I'd never look at a position an hour into the trade and say, hey, I'm doing better than X or Y. But this is just to give you a real example of wouldn't a long call be better? Wouldn't substituting the stock for an in-the-money long call be better? And is the long call a parity trade to the married put? The answer is no. The married put's a little bit better in comparison and real-life examples. Of course, if COG gaps up 15% tomorrow, you're probably going to have a 100% return on the long call you're probably going to have a 20 to 30% return on this in the money long strangle and I'm probably going to be at an 8% return on my investment on the married put.
And what if it goes the other way? What if it gaps down 15%? I'm going to be at a loss of about 4% on the married put. The leverage loss is here. You might start to see a gain on the put, and you probably would on the in-the-money long strangle. Your long call would probably be at a 70 80% loss. All right. So we talked about the basics. We talked about the structure. What put to select? Why do we select that put? Because it follows the three rules of trading that should really go along with any strategy not just the radioactive trades. We showed why you're not maybe getting the gains you're expecting with covered calls and credit spreads because of the lie of leverage, how radioactive trading solves that as well. You know, why am I paying so much for the put? Why am I selecting that put? And is it the same as a long call or can't you do better with other structures that simulate or mimic the married put using leverage? In every example I found, the answer is no. And that's why I still trade it with my personal account, all right? So why the 12 income methods? Why do I need 12 different adjustments, okay? And this, this is going to go to a question that Sean asked earlier. And Sean, I was waiting for this point to get to your question. Thank you for staying with me. He says, of the radioactive trading methods, the 11 that he has, how many do I need to know thoroughly in order to get by? Well, it depends on market conditions. I'm probably going to say four. Four of the 12, maybe five of the 12. But why are there 12, Sean, to begin with? Well, for different market conditions. Income method number one, three, four, five, and six, those are best used if the stock moves up in price as we expected from when we originally entered the position. If the stock stagnates, doesn't do what I expected in the first 20 days. It's just kind of hanging around at a 0.3 or 0.4 percent gain or loss, well then I'd consider income method number six, number seven, or possibly number eight. Some are used if the stock falls. I could use six again. I could use nine. That would be the appropriate one to use. But only if I think the stock will recover. And if the stock continues to fall, I could use income method 12, variation of income method number 11 to profit in both directions. And then I can use combinations of those to really enhance my return on the position. Okay, so do you need to know all 12? Well, it helps because there are different market conditions. The blueprint teaches what we call the SEGA model for how and when to use each income method. The SEGA model is current conditions, C. What are the current conditions of the market in your position? E, what are your expectations moving forward? Do you want to generate income but leave the upside open? That's going to push me towards income method number six, not income method number one. Do I think the stock has had a good run, but I think it's petered out and it's going to pull back? That's when I might use income method number 12 or a combination of six and 12. Or I could use four. Okay, the goals for the position. Is your goal is to lower the risk as much as possible to potentially have a no risk or bulletproof trade and leave the upside open? Or are your goals to generate income now and have a profit and loss chart based on your expectation going forward? And the answer to those three is going to determine your action. So it's conditions, expectation, goals, and that determines your action. And each one of those is explained in detail in the blueprint for each of the 12 income methods. And why 12? Well, there's really 13. The 13th is do nothing. Whether things are going as you expected or not, don't force an income method because it doesn't look exactly right. Don't feel the need to force an adjustment on your position if it doesn't match your SEGA model just for the sake of generating some premium. So income method number 13 is do nothing. Wait for a better opportunity. But why 12? Well, again, if you're building a shed, a playhouse, you just want a hammer and nails? No. You want to drill. You're going to need some screws. You're going to want a level. You're probably going to need a saw. And you're going to need a hammer and nails. And you're possibly going to need a beer, refreshing drink, or some patience. Okay? But that's why there's 12 different income methods. For different market conditions, the unexpected does happen. Thankfully, we're already limited in our risks to begin with. 
but there are ways that we can adjust if the stock stagnates, if the stock moves down, if the stock gaps down unexpectedly and we think it might recover because it was an overreaction. This is why there are 12 different income methods. And speaking of patience, ninth frequently asked question from the original structure of radioactive trade is when I open a radioactive trade, it was because I did my research and analysis after I saw the results and I expect the stock to potentially move up 3 to 6% in the next 20 to 30 days. Again, I'm not always right, but I'm right about 60% of the time. Okay? But if I open the radioactive trade and I act too soon, you can put yourself in a worse position for too little reward. Let's look at COG again. If I had opened this position yesterday, bought stock at 28.13, bought that 2019, January 30 put for 4.10, I have a controlled risk, but it also would have been because I looked at the chart, did my analysis, and based on how I approach things, I'd say that this stock has a potential to move up maybe, you know, 3 to 6 or 4 or 5% in the next 30 days. Okay? So let's say that that was my expectation. And the 5% gain up about $1.40 would put us at about $29.55 in the next 20 to 30 days. So why didn't I sell a call yesterday? Well, income method number one, just the simple look at it is, of course, selling a call against the married put to create a collar. Pretty simple. Sort of a dynamic collar because the put's so far out and my call is short term. Again, taking advantage of the red line. I'm selling close in and my protection is far out. But I want to get a good premium. And this solves two questions here. I could sell the two week out, January 12th, 29 call on COG for 25 cents. So, yes, you could use weekly options and radioactive trading techniques, okay? but you don't want to force it the wrong way just because weeklies are available. This isn't a great premium. And why am I not looking at the 30 call? Well, because it was only priced at $0.05. Cents. It's not worth it. Why am I not looking at the 28? Because it's in the money. I have longer-term growth prospects. But look at the structure of this one. What's interesting here, if I sold the 29 call, did I reduce my risk from 223 down to 198? Oops, no. The risk went up to 298, to 9.3% when I originally had a risk of 6.9%. How did the risk increase when I generated income? It's because it increased to the upside because I sold the call too soon at too low of a strike price and for too little premium. If the stock hits my expectation of $29.55, I'm actually giving back. The best I could have expected was a max profit of $79 or 2.5% if COG was trading right at $29 on January 12th. Okay, but that's not my expectation. This is trading against my expectation. Buying a put against your stock and creating a radioactive trade is not trading against yourself. It's ensuring your investment. You're long-term bullish. That's why you buy a stock. You buy a put to help ensure the position properly structured, as we saw in the first 12 slides or so. But that's not trading against myself. That's not saying, oh, I don't trust myself, and the stock I selected is going to fall. Well, we know that happens without any direct input from the stock. What I mean by that is any outside event geopolitical event, black swan event, can cause all the stocks to fall. I'm ensuring an investment. If I sell a call too soon at the improper strike price, now I'm trading against myself. Forcing an income method for too little reward, too little premium, and some people argue, oh, well, it's 25 cents you didn't have yesterday. But if my expectation is here, going up to 29.55 or higher, because I was bullish on the stock, I am now trading against myself by forcing this too soon. My risk is increased on the upside in the direction I thought the stock was going to go. We did lower the cost into the position from 32.23 down to 31.98. But we put ourselves in a position to potentially give up shares of stock at 29. And that's why the risk increases in the direction we thought the stock was going to go. 
So why not do an income method right away? Because you put yourself in the wrong position. It's better to wait. Patience is a virtue. See, in this case, if the stock moved up to 29.55, that collar we just showed on COG would have a gain of 45 cents. It's not bad, okay? And that's the liquidation value, right? We'd have to buy to close our 29 strike call on January 12th for 55 cents. We sell to close the stock at 29.55, and then again we sell to close the put at around 3.55. But if I left the position alone, and in 20 to 30 days, or 16 days to January 12th, the stock goes to 29.55, I'm going to have a liquidation profit potentially of 85 cents. Not great, but I didn't selling the call didn't give me a benefit. Having patience and waiting for the stock to hit my expectations would have performed better, okay? Now what's interesting is the put's worth about 355, but it's only 45 cents in the money. How's it worth 355? Because of the ATM bell curve, remember we started with an in the money put, and now as the stock moved up, sure, we gave back intrinsic value, but the extrinsic value also swelled because we've gone from in the money to at the money, and our 30 strike put, near month or far month, now has the highest time value of all options on the chain. Okay, But also, now that the stock's moved up, I can get a better premium for selling a higher strike call, much more than 25 cents, but at the 30 strike, or maybe the 31 strike. Okay, so, and it's not increasing my risk at that point to the upside, and it's giving me a better return. Now, there are income methods I might do right away. That is talked about in the blueprint as well. Income method number six is a riskless spread trade. It's one of the four riskless spread trades we use in radioactive trading. Now, income method number 12 I've done right off the bat before sort of creates a synthetic strangle or, stra uh, strangle or straddle profit and loss chart where I might be able to profit both ways. But doing it right away reduces the upside, and it is better to wait. Okay, so best thing to do is not do an income method right away. Why am I not doing an income method right away? Because it puts me in a worse position. I'm going to wait and be patient. Now, speaking of riskless spread trades, can a trade really be riskless? Posted one of our YouTube videos up, or one of our webinars up on YouTube, uh, a couple days ago, last week, excuse me, and someone commented and said, um, you know, this is spam and fraud. I'm going to go through this webinar again and prove the fact you can't really have a riskless trade. Well, yes, you can have a riskless trade. We call it being bulletproof, and it happens all the time. It doesn't happen to every position, but it does happen 30, 40, and sometimes 50% of my trades over a year, depending on the market conditions. One of the current Fusion positions at Radioactive Trading Com, the Fusion subscription where Ernie and I post our trades, and we saw the RPM report where you could pick your own radioactive trades following our technique, was Planet Fitness. Now on August 29th, bought Planet Fitness at 2460. Following the rules and the three core principles, we bought a February 25 put. Okay, so for about September, August 29th, end of August, beginning of September to February, we're looking about five months out. 25 put for two dollars. So again, I total invested was 2660. Why didn't I buy the 30 or the 35? It was too deep in the money. Okay. And this has the risk I wanted. I'm guaranteed to get 25 back. I've got a risk of 160 or 6 percent. Planet Fitness exceeded expectations. And you can see here from the screenshot just before the webinar, the stock's at about 3473. Okay. Exceeded expectations, but not until recently. But about a month and a half, two months into the trade, the stock had moved up. It's about $28 or $29. But guess what? My February 25 put wasn't at zero. We were able to sell to close the 25 put and buy to open a 30. And yeah, the 30 cost me another $1.95. But it only took the total cost up into the position, including the loss on the first put, the cost of the new put and the price of the stock was at $27.75. But I now own a February 30 strike put, which means the worst case scenario 
is I'm going to make $225 or 8.1%. I have a negative 8.1% at risk. Even if something obscure happens and Planet Fitness drops 50% of its current value and goes to $17 per share, I can close out at 30 and make 8.1% on the position. On a stock that fell about $11 from when I originally entered, I'm sorry, $7, $7.50 from my original purchase price of $24.60, I'm getting out with an 8% profit. Now that's the worst case scenario, by the way. That's not where we are right now. Right now, we're at about a 26% liquidation gain on this position. So that's not really that bad for four and a half months. Okay, that's definitely within my goals for any strategy, not just radioactive trades, okay? So that's the liquidation. But look, we still have opportunity to make other adjustments because we're still about 60 days out in the insurance. And the worst case is we'll make 8%. And the stock has to fall 470 or more in order to hit the worst case scenario. And we could liquidate now for much higher, okay? But that's bulletproofing. It is a guaranteed riskless trade. Could I have made more if I had just bought the stock? Sure. But think about taking two trades. Earlier, I mentioned a position that I lost 65% on the stock, but I made 4% following the radioactive trading techniques. That was on Icon, Iconics Brands, which I saw yesterday was down actually again. I think it's trading about $2, $3 per share. It was a terrible trade. It was a terrible stock selection. It looked good, but everything just went wrong over the past three, four years for that position. I was in it for five and a half months and it lost 65%. But I'm bragging about a loser who has got a 4% gain. Okay? All right, now, two portfolios. Let's say I bought Icon and I bought Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness moved up from $24.60, my original purchase price, to $34.73. We have a $10 gain. And Icon dropped 30%. Why do I say 30%, not 65? Because that 30% drop, which was about 14 points, happened overnight, where a stop loss would have been violated. Am I ahead? Not at all. Same portfolio, two structures here. The stock moved up. I even added more to roll the put, and I'm still at about a 26% gain, 24.5, 25. It bounces around during the day, but about 26% gain. And on ICOM, the most I could have lost was 6%. So in that scenario, I'd be winning without doing any adjustments on the married put portfolio. I'd be disastrous loss in that scenario on a long stock portfolio. Or at least a good loss on the position combining the two. And if I was doing covered calls, I'd have to keep rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling up Planet Fitness, adding more to my cost basis for only gaining an extra 1% or 2% each time I rolled, probably not even that much, probably only 1%. And when Icon fell, I would have been close to a 27, 26% loss there. So that's not really gaining too much. You might have been at a 10% gain here rolling the covered calls, maybe even 15, but a 26% loss on the downturn. So that's not doing it either. That's where it shows you the 70% win-loss ratio we talked about on covered calls earlier comes back into play. All right. Okay. So uh, let's talk about this. Uh, Sean says, um, what is your average hold time for each position from opening the trade to closing it? My average put, by the way, I said at least 150 days out, but my average time period on a put that I buy is around seven and a half months. It's around 220 days, 230 days or so. Seven months, eight months out is what I look for. Um, sometimes it's only five months out. Sometimes it's a year out of time with the put protection. But how long do I hold it? It's about 110 to 120 days, about three and a half to four months is my usual hold time. Sometimes I'll be out of a trade in 30 days. If it just doesn't do as I expecting and I, my expectation has changed, I'm now bearish on the position, I'll close the position, just take a 3% loss and not try to manage it long term and just move into something else as well. So that's about my average hold time. That You can see that kind of on the track record at RadioactiveTrading.com as well. Uh, so I'd say my average hold time is around 110 to 120 days, close to three and a half, four months. And the average time for when I buy a put is roughly about uh, 
I apologize, it's roughly about the same. I, I'm sorry, it's roughly 220 days out. All right. I know we're 10 minutes past, but hey, I mentioned it. I mentioned not only riskless trades. Is it possible? Yes, and it happens often. Not all the time. Not every trade is going to be bulletproof and have no risk, but it does happen. But I also made a statement of riskless spread trades. Someone says, well, how can you do riskless spread trades? There's no such thing. Okay, there's no such thing as a riskless spread trade on its own. Even if you're doing ratio back spreads, where maybe if the stock goes one direction, you still have a small profit and you have a peak, but you're still taking risk in one direction. Why do I feel justified as an options trader, an options educator, saying riskless spread trades when we know there's no such thing? Again, because it's the proper structure. Planet Fitness has had a 10-point run in the last five months. Okay, almost 50%, not really, it's, it's like 38, oh, I'm sorry, 48% or so, 40, 44%, okay? But in any case, let's say we feel this is too much, it's got to pull back. So I could enter a bear call spread, a bear call credit. I could sell the 23-day out January 35 call for 70 cents, midpoint. And buy a January 40 call for about 3 cents, so that shows up as 250, that's midpoint, zero bid, 5 cent ask. Now I'm going to get about 68 cents, 67 and a half cents of net credit on this trade at midpoint. Let's just call it 67 cents. Now I do have a five point risk on this spread. If the stock continues to move up and goes above 40, I have to close that obligation. I take the five point loss, but I keep the 67, 68 cents. So my risk is going to be around, you know, 433 or 432, somewhere in that range. Okay. That's a six to one risk reward ratio, isn't it? Roughly, it's actually closer to about a 7 to 1 risk reward ratio, meaning if I did take the full loss in this position, it would wipe out 7 previous successes. Again, needing to be right 85, 90% of the time to profit long term. And this is a good 15.7% leverage return. But this is nowhere near an 80% probability, by the way. It's about a 50 because it's at the money. But in any case, we're thinking the stock's going to fall. We do this bear call spread. It takes a risk. This spread can't be riskless. It has to take a risk of the margin requirement, and we're looking at a 7 to 1 risk-reward ratio. But in the context of a radioactive trade, the bear call credit spread, my 100 shares of Planet with a cost basis of 2580, which includes the adjustments, holding the February 30 put for 195, here I even use less premium, but selling the January 35 call for 65 instead of 70, and I'm paying about 250 for the 40 call. My guaranteed profit moved from a guaranteed exit of 8.1% to 10.6. I didn't lose risk. This isn't saying my risk increased by 2.5%. My risk is lowered. The credit lowers the cost basis, but my risk also lowers. Because it's bulletproof, my guaranteed return rises. And the benefit of this, of just selling the 35 calls, the upside is still open. Why is that important? Because no additional risk is added. This is a riskless bear call spread done in the proper structure. And it lowered the entire risk of my trade. It didn't add risk. Why not? Because really, your broker just sees this as a covered call with an extra long call that you received at a credit. That obligation of the bear call spread, about having to cover the short option, but the long option to cover it is five points away, is negated because we own the stock. It's just really a covered call with an extra long call to leave the upside open. So I did a bear call spread that took on no risk. In fact, it, also, it actually lowered my risk in the proper structure. It's a riskless spread trade. And there's three others riskless spread trades that we use at Radioactive Trading of the different 12 income methods. Okay, so why is there 12? Because my expectations might be different. Now, if I expected that Planet Fitness had gone on its edge or finished its run and was going to pull back to, say, 28 or 30, I could easily do a structure that looked something like that. Still generated premium maybe done something else, income method number 12, to profit on the downside if it pulls back, but still have no risk. 
essentially a no risk straddle. I could not even do income method number six and have a no risk straddle where I could profit on the downside, I could profit on the upside, and even if the stock stayed right at 30 or right at 35, I'm still guaranteed a profit. Riskless trades are possible. They happen in the radioactive trading techniques. It's called bulletproofing. It is not a sham. I wouldn't do that to you. It's not fraudulent. It happens and it exists and we do it all the time. Okay. Uh, speaking of which, I had a customer call me the other day. He's been in uh, investing for years and he's got core holdings in his stocks and he says, yeah, you know, I've got an actual guaranteed profit of 50% on Apple. I said, wow, that's, that's fantastic. He said, yeah, it only took me eight years of selling covered calls to get there and taking the gains on the stock and selling some here and buying there. But now I've got a 50% guaranteed profit over eight years. That's great. I've got an 8% guaranteed profit in five months. Not possible with covered calls unless, of course, you're trying to buy a risky, high volatile $3 stock and selling a 350 call against it for 40 cents. And you do that seven, eight cycles in a row. But that type of stock is bound to move around and adjust. Okay. But yes, riskless spread trades. I'm confident saying that even as an options educator and an options investor without feeling like I'm being fraudulent. Bulletproofing does exist and it is possible with the radioactive trading techniques. All right. Those are the 10 FAQs that I wanted to go over with you today. The commonly asked questions which I feel have... I've mostly answered as part of what is radioactive trading to begin with? What is the structure? Why do you do it? Couldn't you do better with other strategies? Why are you paying so much for the put? Why aren't you selling premium right away? Why aren't you generating income? Long term, couldn't you do better with a different structure that mimics the radioactive trade? And those are the 10 questions that I wanted to answer. Now, I know you might have questions on your own, so I invite you to email me at any time to support at radioactivetrading.com with your questions. Also at any time, or, or before Friday, I'm sorry, but you can also go to radioactivetrading.com and you'll see the next upcoming webinar on Friday, our open forum Q&A session at 4.30 p.m. We host that every Friday. But if you think you have questions, if you have questions about the technique, about what we saw, the comparisons, Register for Friday's webinar at 4.30 p.m. just after the market closes and bring your questions. I answer everything on the fly. I don't, I never hide questions and I never don't answer a question. We answer all the questions that come in on that webinar. But again, email me if you have questions about radioactive trading that weren't answered in today's FAQ. Or register for Friday's webinar as well. And what I showed you today, I mentioned at the very beginning I wasn't going to rehash how limiting risk can benefit your portfolio. Um, I wasn't going to show you flashy charts. I didn't really show you flashy charts. I didn't spend a lot of time rehashing how this could benefit your portfolio. I showed you, in my opinion, based on the common questions that are answered of why we do this, how it benefits our portfolio, why are we still doing it, why are earning myself still trading this, knowing that we have tools that support over 23 of the most common option strategies and the most popular option strategies and patented search tools to implement that. And Ernie and I even have tested criteria in those strategies that over the last two years showed 40 to 85% profit. Why am I still doing this? Because long term, those strategies without shifting, without the proper win-loss ratio, which is higher than you expect it to be, will likely not be profitable long term. Okay? Am I saying that you should stop everything and pick up the blueprint now and take all of your funds and the spread trades and the covered calls and everything you're doing right now and put 100% into radioactive positions? Absolutely not. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying this should be part of your trading regimen and part of your portfolio. If you find yourself treading water, or losing on spread trades, even with an 80% win ratio, or if you're treading water with covered calls, even being right 65, 66, or 70% of the time, we showed you why that occurs. It's because of the structure and the lie of leverage. Or if you're close to retirement and you're worried about what could happen in 2018, well, 
if you're worried about protecting the gains you've made in 2017 or 2016 to now, but you still want to take advantage of the upside, you probably have potential to buy put on your stock positions right now that have gains to be bulletproof, to lock in those gains. If you've got a 10% gain on a stock, you could buy a one-year out or six-month output today and probably guarantee 60% of that 10% gain with no fear going through the next three or four months where we'll cross earnings, other events, and your upside is still open. Still take advantage of further upside with no fear of risk. And if you don't own stock and you've had a successful year where you, let's say, made $20,000 in a sixty dollars or $80,000 account, where well, you could take those profits and put them into limited risk positions. And you keep trading the same strategy and the market turns because the market four months from now is not going to be the market we're seeing today. It could be better or it could be worse. But if you don't want to give up those profits, you can take those earnings that you've had, put them into properly structured limited risk positions where you can potentially bulletproof, where you still have the upside open and you have the opportunity of 12 different income methods to adjust that position to begin with, lower the risk, and you can still trade actively and generate income, but you don't have to. All right? well, I showed you that weekly spread trade portfolio with about 110 trades per year, and it, the return wasn't including the commissions on those 110 trades, okay? But how often would I have to be watching a portfolio based on market movements, fluctuations, and more? Is that how you want to spend your time? Okay, you're close to retirement, or in retirement, you don't want to be glued to the screen, watching your credit spreads, ratio spreads, trying to manage diagonal spreads that are showing a 20% loss on investment, and the stock can only drop 4%. You want to have a proper structure in place where you can still move forward, knowing that you're in control, sleeping peacefully at night because you're in control, even in the worst-case scenario, and still being able to take advantage of further upside and still being able to apply adjustments as an active trader. Well, that's what I think you should do. I'm not saying stop everything and invest everything into radioactive trading and your entire portfolio, but I think it should be part of it, and your step to be part of radioactive trading is you want to pick up the blueprint and get started. Again, that's the full work that describes the structure, the setup, the details of the which put to select and so forth we touched upon today, and how and when to use each of those 12 different income methods, the SEGA model for each one, and case studies, a whole chapter on combining income methods, and to answer one of your questions, Sean, there's a whole chapter in the blueprint on exiting the RPM. And of course, we want to make it easier for you. Every year we run a special, and this year we've increased the special. If you pick up the blueprint before December 31st, when time runs out, you're going to receive eight bonuses. You're going to receive two months of Fusion, the subscription at Radioactive Trading where you can see my trades and Ernie's trades, the RPM report we showed earlier, other tools, access to members-only webinars, and a series of lessons that have been put together to help you master radioactive trading. But you'll get your first two months for only $10 per month. So it's a $59 discount for each month. The subscription is usually $69 per month. But you get your first two months for only $10. You'll get a free month of power options. Didn't look at those tools today, but you saw the custom spread tool and some of the features we were showing. You'll get two of our Mastery Series videos, the Foundations of Radioactive Trading CD, and anyone who picks up the blueprint before December 31st will get an invitation to our members-only webinar for income method number 12 coming up in January. Of course, there's another video we're also going to send you as well. You'll get the Quick Start Guide, and you'll also get free support, phone or email as a blueprint owner, and this is a physical product. It's a 250-page robust text in a three-page binder. Usually has a shipping fee up to $69 uh, to uh, Europe or England. And yes, we've got blueprint owners in uh, I think over 275 uh, different countries right now or something along those lines. Uh, well, 275 different uh, cities in different countries. Um, we've sold blueprints, of course, to Japan, to Asia, Australia. That's why I mentioned that at the beginning. We have people who've bought it in India, um, uh, parts of Africa, I believe, as well. Of course, Germany, uh, Czechoslovakia, Russia, um, England, 
and the United States, Canada, Mexico, Brazil. I get an email once every two weeks from one of our customers down in Brazil there uh, as well. But we're going to waive the shipping. So if you pick it up before December 31st, there's no shipping, discount two months of Fusion, a free month of power options, and you don't have to take these right away. If you pick up the blueprint, these bonuses here are for when you're ready. They won't start until you first log in. So you can actually wait two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, go through the information in the blueprint, and then start your free month of power options or your discounted month of fusion as well. Now, in addition to that, we always offer a money-back guarantee. So it's a bulletproof investment to start. If you pick up the blueprint at $339, you get to keep the eight bonuses. But if you decide it's not for you, and you send it back, we'll give you the purchase price back, no questions asked. So you're risking nothing to begin with. But again, that all ends on December 31st. Take a look at the special bonuses there, radioactivetrading.com slash EOI, short for end of the year. Go to that link, you'll be able to review the eight bonuses that are being offered and other information as well. We won't continue this offer going into next year Okay, so this does end December 31st at midnight. Remember, you're also going to get the access to the members-only webinar as a blueprint owner, future invites to other members-only webinars going forward, and any time an update is made to the blueprint. Even if we come up with a new income method that we're confident in and we feel doesn't change the risk too much, or if we've made enhancements to discussion in a particular income method or come up with an alternative for an income method, as a blueprint owner, you get those updates for free. You'll be able to download those, put them in the binder, and you're all set. All right. So I think I've shown you what I wanted to show you today. We went through the FAQs, the commonly asked questions. Why do we do this? What is it, of course? What is radioactive trading? Why do we do it? Why is it important to limit risk and have the proper structure. Why are you not getting ahead with covered calls and spread positions? Why am I paying so much for the put? What is the benefit of the put? Why am I not doing an adjustment right away? Why am I waiting to do an adjustment? Can a trade really be riskless? And is there such thing as a riskless spread trade? You can get all of that with all of the special eight bonuses and a money back guarantee, but you got to act by December 31st. I want to thank you all for joining me today. I hope you all got some useful information out of today's presentation, and I hope to see you in the future going forward in one of our live presentations that we typically host every week as well. So take care, everyone. Happy trading. Happy New Year's if I don't see you before uh, next Tuesday. And remember, short week next week as the market's going to be closed on Monday for New Year's Day. We'll see you soon. Good night.